Welcome everybody, thank you for tuning in today as we check out the Mondraker Crafty RRSL. This is the top of the line offering from Mondraker in their e-bike lineup. No expenses spared, best components you can get from SRAM, Axis, Drivetrain, Fox Factory Suspension, and Shimano's XTR brakes. It also features a Bosch Performance Line CX drive unit with a 625 watt hour battery, the Kiox display. Uh, again, there is no shortage of fancy parts on this bike, but that doesn't mean it's the best riding bike we've ever been on. And we're gonna get into that in just a second. Welcome everybody to the high desert. We are out testing the Mondraker Crafty RRSL. It is claimed to be the lightest full powered e-bike out on the market in the mid 40 pound range. We'd say that might be true, at least in the terms of what we've tested in the past. Now there are some things we're gonna address that help them get to that weight and are things that uh, we think realistically riders are gonna be changing, but uh, we'll wait for the ride report to get to that. So let's go for a little ride on this quick and dirty bike review. Alrighty folks, we're on our way up and you are gonna see why the longest, lowest, slackest, most progressive geo bikes aren't always what they're cracked up to be. Sure, for some people out there riding purpose-built mountain bike specific flow trails, they undeniably have their advantages. However, for those of us who enjoy mountain biking and mountainous trails that have multi-use terrain and large embedded obstacles, I gotta say, 500 millimeter reaches and super low bottom bracket heights are not the way to go. And it seems like Mondraker has a pretty good spread in their sizing. I'm five foot 11 and I opted to go for the size medium, which has a 470 millimeter reach and the large has a 490 which is a little larger and longer, I should say, than my preferred reach. So I decided to size down to a medium. Um, and I gotta say, I, I feel like I made the right choice for the most part. There are a couple of trails that I've tested so far where it's really steep extended chutes or high speed downhills where a little longer front end probably would have made me feel a little bit more comfortable, but for the most part, having this 470 reaches is definitely not a bummer. Um, you know, I like 475 to 480 is kind of my sweet spot, so this isn't too small for me by any means. I like that the bottom bracket is not ridiculously low. Um, some bikes we've tested, especially the canyons, are so low that in order for us to even come out here and get this loop in and not be catapulting ourselves off the side of the trail, we gotta shorten the crank arms. And uh, last thing you wanna do when you spend several thousand dollars is have to spend another couple hundred on crank arm swaps. But I digress. Top of the line offering from Mondraker. It is a beautiful bike. Uh, I haven't really found very many Mondrakers that are not beautiful bikes though, but this one in its all black tuxedo is top notch, finely tuned spec. We've got AXS drivetrain, XTR brakes, Fox factory suspension front and rear, a 36 fork, which, um, you know, for a, a 160, 
front end 29er e-bike you know might have some people a little bit hesitant um, and I think depending on where you ride that might be a valid concern um, for us you know I, I'm 50 50 on it I'm just I'm happy with a 36 on this level of bike some other bikes definitely would like a 38 but I would consider this a long-legged trail e-bike and uh, for that purpose a 36 is great a little bit of compliance isn't a bad thing 65 and a half degree head tube angle uh, by no means is this thing slack but it is also very snappy very nimble and as you're gonna see later on is gonna allow me to get through some of these little needles I gotta thread much quicker than something like a like a Norco sight for example which I think has like a 490 reach or 495 reach and 64 degree or 63 and a half degree head tube angle or something silly so so over the last couple of months we've been putting a lot of time on the Mondraker Crafty uh, we've passed it around to a few riders and have had uh, mixed reports from each rider depending on the type of terrain that we're riding and um, initially we really loved this bike we thought it was stiff it was snappy that low weight you know 44 and a half 45 pounds definitely makes it enjoyable on the trail um, and right off the bat we just instantly felt comfortable we were happy with it and loved the power of that Bosch system on very technical chunky stair steppy climbs um, being able to put that thing into that that turbo mode and just letting that bike crawl up was really impressive it also has a really high anti-squat value um, and a pretty firm compression setting although in the shock tune it claims it's only a medium but with the kinematic tune on this bike it rides very stiff and firm which means the efficiency the snappiness that platform made it a blast on flowy trails um, while climbing and really trying to stand up and accelerate quickly out of corners so we're about to drop in here trail starts out with a little bit of a uh, chunk and some rough rocks after that we get into some nice fast high speed sections followed by a little bit more chunk and then more high speed sections so you can probably hear that rattling at least i hope you can oh boy rattles here's that rattle all right so coming up to my favorite part there's a uh, a little step down well i wouldn't call it i guess it's a step down <laughs> it's a few rocks and if you gap it right you catch a tiny little pebble transition right here hard break more rock chunk now some awkward tight rocky bit here okay there it is folks this thing she rips steep stuff right there very steep <sighs> All right. This thing climbs very well. Just bombed down one of our favorite little downhills and uh, it is fast. Lots of big braking bumps, lots of small high frequency braking bumps, a couple little like three, four foot drops. 
um, kind of some little lifts into some big compression, high braking compression corners. And I'm very impressed actually. This bike did really well. Um, we've ridden it on a lot of trails up in the woods and in the forest and, and kind of gotten into that side of things. We wanted to come out today and try it on the rocks and the loose, faster, high speed stuff and see if it would still do equally well here. And I gotta say, I'm rather impressed. A um, couple things to note, uh, head tube angle feels a little steep, um, you know, only in a couple, very couple of sections on that trail, not the whole time, but maybe like two or three instances that I kind of feel a little timid, like I wish it was a maybe a degree slacker, maybe half a degree would be enough, but um, you know, that could also be the 36 versus 38, just that little bit of, of flex of that fork coming underneath could cause it to steepen up and feel a little bit more skittish. But, you know, I really don't think that my time on that was that much slower um, than on other bikes in the category or even slightly more aggressive bikes. But, you know, the conditions were definitely a bit looser today. Uh, I will say that this rear tire, I kind of was talking about that, the Recon. Thank God for the XO Plus, but that that stuff and this stuff, a li little bit sketchy. Um, not terrible, but just a little bit. Um, you guys probably heard the rattle. That's definitely an issue on this bike. When we got it onto really choppy and rough terrain, the back end of this bike just got very stiff. Um, and borderline abusive to some of our riders, myself included. And I really think it, it kind of boils down to the engineers and the designers at Mondraker putting more emphasis into the efficiency and the pedal platform rather than the bump compliance and smoothness, which I think is more important out of an e-bike, right? You've got a motor, you've got a battery, Let's focus on traction and a supple ride rather than stiffness and platform for maximum efficiency. If you're someone who doesn't regularly find yourself encountering square edge bumps, whether that's you know exposed roots or lots of uh, extended rock garden sections, that likely won't be an issue and the benefits of how fast and snappy this bike will, will outweigh those negatives. That stiffness off the back end is really gonna tire your feet and hands out and it's gonna slow the bike down. And uh, I think that's really the big negative out of this bike that, that we have to take away from. So now that we've pointed out some of the negatives, there are a lot of positives, a lot of really cool features about this bike. Mondraker has a really neat integrated rear fender just here above the seat stays. Does a great job of preventing some of the debris from throwing up and coming down into that linkage. The lines are beautiful. How everything's molded into the frame is great. Up here in the front, there's actually some little intake scoops. And uh, the, I guess, intended app purpose of those is to have air come in, help keep that battery cool, which is gonna extend range, make that 625 watt hour battery last as long as possible. Just get some nice air flowing through there. That's a really neat feature. And while some riders who live in very wet, muddy climates might have some issue with it, we still think it's really cool that Mondraker is thinking outside the box and trying to look at ways to keep battery range maximized and keeping these electronics cool on the bike. All right, so we've talked about pros, cons, ride characteristics. Who is this bike for? Well, in this spec, this bike is for someone who has got a lot of money to spend or wants the absolute best in performance. The Crafty is available at more price friendly or more budget friendly price points. Um, and based on our experience, I don't think you're gonna see a huge downgrade in ride performance if you were to down spec and save yourself some money. Nevertheless, if you love AXS drivetrain, if you gotta have factory suspension and XTR brakes, by all means, have at it. It is awesome. We haven't had to worry about anything on this bike. It has run flawlessly and everything works great. Um, so there's something to be said for that, but you don't need to spend $15,000 to have fun on the Crafty. Now, I think riders who are gonna benefit most from this will probably be heavier riders. Uh, you know, we are about 165 to 175 pounds, depending on our tester. 
We think it's too stiff and chattery on rough square edge bumps. So I'd say if you're probably over that 185, 190 mark, you'll probably be able to push through the anti-rise because of that extra weight and make this bike feel a bit smoother. Also, if you live somewhere where most of your trails are kind of that newer school, flowy, pumpy types of trails, jumps and berms, or if your rocky, rooty sections are very short, you know, 50, 60 feet, and you can just hold on and hammer through those, this bike is going to be an absolute blast. It's gonna be fast, fun, ride high in the travel. It is very stiff, and it is definitely one of the most fun bikes we've ridden in those types of conditions. The flip side is if you are lighter or if you exclusively ride terrain that is very choppy, very rough, lots of square edge bumps, I think there are better options out there that are gonna have a smoother, more supple rear end that is gonna give you more traction, more comfort, and uh, ultimately more speed on the trail. Granted, everyone has a different preference. I like a very soft floaty feel off the top of the suspension that kind of just floats over those stutter bumps. If you like a stiffer, firmer feeling bike, um, this could be a great option for you there. So um, in a nutshell, that's our thoughts on the Crafty RRSL. Beautiful bike, fun bike, but it definitely has some drawbacks on those rough chattery trails. Thank you guys very much for watching. We would also like to extend a huge thanks to Fly Rides Bike Shop down in Southern California. They've got two locations in San Diego and Los Angeles. They were kind enough to send us one of their bikes out of their personal fleet to try out. Um, they have got a ton of other brands available. If you're in the market for a Mondraker or another e-bike, They've got a lot of options for you. So check out Fly Rides and uh, thanks again for sending us this bike. We appreciate it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Leave any comments or questions down below. We'd be happy to answer them. Also, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We would really appreciate having you guys subscribe. We've been looking at our analytics and surprisingly, about 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. So please take a second, hit that button. We'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching and we'll see you out on the trails.